About a week or so ago, I found out that there is a playable version of tic-tac-toe on Google. You can play it too, just by searching the term tic-tac-toe in the search bar and it will pop up. It had an impossible level, which I tried to beat and failed miserably as I lost 15 games in a row. I then tried beating it on medium and I still lost a few games there, but I also managed to win a few. Obviously, I needed some help and so I decided to write some code. But how do you beat Google at tic-tac-toe? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, the strategy that I have in mind is two-step. Step one is finding out which move Google made on the board. And step two is finding out the best counter move to increase our chances of winning. All right, let's start with step one, which is writing a program to find out which move Google made on the board. For example, if the cells on the board are labeled 1 through 9 and Google plays a move number 7, we want the program to show that Google played that exact move. We also want it to exclude any old moves that Google has played and only show the new ones. So how do we do it? We use a method called web scraping, which is used to scrape data off of websites, and we implement this method using Selenium, which is just a module that is used mostly in website automation and testing. If you're ever on a web page and you click on the inspect element option, you will see a bunch of colorful HTML code that basically describes everything you're seeing on the web page. Using a Node.js script, we will be constantly monitoring the table elements on the tic-tac-toe web page and looking for all visible O's on the board. Another thing that makes our job easy is the fact that each cell on the tic-tac-toe board has a pre-assigned column and row value. Now when we run the program, we get this output. Next it's time for step 2, which is finding the best counter move to Google's move. And we will be doing that by writing a bot that plays for us. Now, if you spend 10 seconds and just search the term Python tic-tac-toe bot, you'll find that there are countless articles and examples that show up, some of which I referenced for this very project. We'll be using the Minimax algorithm, and we'll be implementing that algorithm through Python. And obviously, you might be asking yourself, what is Minimax? Well, Minimax is an optimal decision-making algorithm that is primarily used in two-player games such as chess, and you guessed it, tic-tac-toe. The algorithm works by backtracking from the end of the game all the way to the start and then tries to find out the most optimal move that increases your chances of winning and minimizes your chances of losing. In the Python bot I wrote, the machine finds the best possible move and prints it out so that I can win or at the very minimum draw the game. And with this explanation over, we can proceed to the final version of this bot which looks something like this and works like this. Every time Google makes a move on the board, the Node.js script detects that and, if it is a new move, sends that data to the PyBot, which then gives me the best counter move. And if everything works fine, I win. So obviously, the bot that I wrote works, but how well does it work? And to figure that out, we'll be using some stats. Before making this project, I played a total of 50 games on medium and 50 games on impossible difficulty. On medium difficulty, I won 19 games, lost 12 games, and had 19 games that ended in a draw. On impossible difficulty, I had 33 games that ended in a draw, but I lost 17 games. And just like in the intro to this video, won exactly zero. And now that I've finished the project, it's time to collect some more stats. Using my code, on medium difficulty, I lost zero games, had zero draws, and I won an amazing 50 games in a row. I know, it's amazing. My win rate literally went from 38% to 100%. Unfortunately, here's the bad news. On impossible difficulty, I didn't lose any game, but I didn't exactly win any as well. Yep, that's right, all the games ended in a draw. But why did all the games end in a tie? And to explain this, we need to compare two games, one on medium difficulty and another on impossible difficulty. Mathematically, tic-tac-toe is a game in which if both sides play optimally, the game always ends in a draw. However, if one side plays perfect and the other side doesn't, the game has a much lower chance of ending in a tie and a much higher chance of ending in a loss or a win, depending on which side plays perfect. And since both my bot as well as Google were playing optimally every single chance they got, all of the impossible games ended in a draw. But there is a silver lining to this. Now that I know that Google's impossible level bot is just as hard to beat as my own bot, 
All I have to do is just write code to make my bot even better. And obviously that is better said than done, but it'll be a lot easier for me to do now that I know exactly how Google's algorithm works. Well, this is about it for the video. I think the major takeaway here is that if you're ever bad at a game, just write a bot that plays for you and wins all the time. If you have any suggestions, any comments whatsoever, leave them in the comment section down below. Also, all the articles for the PyBot as well as the source code for the web scraper are in the description so you can go check them out. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!